What's up, LHS? I'm Wade. And I'm Noel. Seniors need to check their school email for a link to retake senior pictures, submit baby pictures and quotes, and to order senior ads. All of these things must be completed by September 27th. The PSAT will be October 16th. The cost is $16 and is open to all sophomores and juniors. The deadline to sign up is Friday, September 13th. If you register for the exam, you will be required to pay it, even if you do not take it. Sign up and guidance. Yearbooks are on sale, and we're having a back-to-school special. Yearbooks are $65 if purchased by September 30th. All students who did not pick up their IDs need to come by a 303 between classes to pick them up. This year, LHS HOSA is promoting Team Gracie at Sherry's Run. If you go to sherrysrun.org, you can register to run or walk for Team Gracie. Here's McKenzie with more information. Hey LHS, big announcement, so listen up. Gracelyn Davis is the three-year-old daughter of Lebanon's alumni student, Lindsay Davis. Gracie was sadly diagnosed with two different types of leukemia in 2018, and she is currently going through chemotherapy. LHS Hosa is trying to give Gracie the largest team at Sherry's Run this year. Sherry's Run is this Saturday at 8 a.m. at Wilson Bank & Trust. This year, Hosa is promoting Team Gracie, so if you want to register, go to www.sherrysrun.org and you can register to run or walk for Team Gracie. Also, if you do register and you want the Team Gracie t-shirt, bring $10 to Miss Ward in room C306. If you can't participate in Sherry's Run, but you still want to support Gracie by purchasing a t-shirt, bring $20 to Miss Ward in room C306. Remember to go to sherrysrun.org so you can register to want our walk or donate to Team Gracie. Our parent-teacher conferences will be held today from 3.30 to 6.30. Our teachers love to spend time with your parents. This is a great way for them to brag about how well you are doing in class. And freshmen, there will be a seminar today in the auditorium at 1.35. The ACT will be given this Saturday from 8 to 12. Here are some helpful tips to help you prepare for the test. Hey guys, it's Brooke with Super Tutor TV, and today I'm going to tell you about how to cram for the ACT. If you're a procrastinator and you are looking at taking this test very soon and want to do whatever you can and don't have a lot of time to prepare for this test, we've got a few tips for you today to help you navigate your uh, limited prep time as wisely as possible. The first thing that you should do, and this is just really important so that you can show up test day and kind of know what you're doing, is to familiarize yourself with the test. And the first step to familiarizing yourself with the test is to get a hold of a copy of the test. Uh, the best way to do that is you can download a full copy of the test, print it out, and read through the directions. Check that stuff out, understand what it is that you have to do, and familiarize yourself enough so that when you show up on test day, you're not spending time reading directions, you're spending time just doing the test. Time is one of the most challenging things on the ACT, so you want to be ready for it, you want to kind to know at least what's up so that you don't waste that time figuring out what you have to do. The other thing to be aware of is that there is no penalty for guessing on the ACT. This also is in all the instructions, etc. But you should know that so if you do run out of time, you just are going to put BBBBBBBB -B 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 for everything that's left so that you can at least have a chance at getting some points. The second thing that I recommend is that I actually have my number one secret tip videos series for this particular test. What they are is just some basic tips that give you a little bit of a mind's eye into how to approach some of the questions in each section. In particular, if you're a crammer, the science tip, the English tip, and the reading tip are going to be most useful to you. The math tip is really focused more on people who have a little bit more time to prep. So if you've got like a week or a few days and you want to put in some time, that video could also be of help to you. The third thing that I recommend is that you actually try to take a practice exam. The most difficult part of the ACT is time. And the easiest thing to improve on a little bit in a very short amount of study time is pacing. Now I understand that you might not have time to take an entire practice exam. And if that's the case, what I would recommend is do at least two or three questions from each type of section so that you're familiar enough with each section that you kind of get what you have to do. If you can, use a watch, use a stopwatch, try to time yourself um, as you go so that you can kind of pace yourself and know how far you are and be a little bit aware and just know up front that this test is hard to finish on time. If you know that going in, you're going to benefit from that and be able to pace yourself a little bit better. The sections that I would emphasize that you try to time yourself and do 
Uh, first would be the science section and the reading section. The third section that I would recommend checking out if you have the time would be the math section. If you don't have time to take a whole math section, take the second half, take the last 30 questions and give yourself something like 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes and see how you do. And finally, the English section is the section that most people don't completely royally screw up. So I would touch on that last if you have the time, but I do again recommend if you do have the time to take a full practice test. After you've taken it, grade it. And that brings us to our next tip, which is number four, go over your answers. So once you've taken your practice test, your practice test sections, I recommend that you go over your answers so that you can learn from that experience. Learning from your mistakes is one of the best ways we can learn. That's something called the testing effect. We have a video on that if you want to check that out. I have great news for you all. I have actually in video form explained every single answer to every single question on the 2015 to 2016 practice test that is available for free download at ACT.org. So what I try to do in these explanations is give you guys a little piece of how does the ACT think? and let you into that mind of the ACT so that you can start thinking the way the ACT test makers think as opposed to whatever way you were thinking before. The next thing you should do is pack, and I've got a whole video on what to pack for the ACT, so you can check out that video. Make sure you gather all that stuff kind of the night before so you're not scrambling in the morning. And all that I'll say in addition to the list that the ACT people put out is, um, you might want to also bring a pencil sharpener. Make sure you double check that your calculator is approved because uh, the TI-89, the TI Inspire CAS editions are not approved. The other thing that I'll say really quickly is you do want to bring food. And that brings me to our next point, which is my big advice for you is if you want to up your score or give yourself the best chance of survival on this test, make sure you one, eat a good breakfast and two, bring good snacks. You're going to have to put them in a bag because the ACT actually says that you're not supposed to bring snacks into the testing center. You can, you just have to have them in a bag and zipped up and put away. And you can eat those snacks on your breaks when you go out into the hallway or when they let you leave the testing center for a little bit. So why do you need to bring food? Well, studies have shown since the 1960s that students do better on standardized tests when they've had breakfast. If you eat right before you work, you are getting the best version of your brain. And that's what you want when you're sitting down to take the ACT. One last quick note on food. I don't recommend ingesting caffeine unless it's a regular habit for you. If it is a regular habit, do what you normally do. If not, your adrenaline is probably going to keep you awake enough that you don't need those extra jitters. So one last tip, if you've still got a little bit of extra time left after all this stuff, after you're packed and ready to go and you've taken a practice test, what I would recommend is that you check out um, programming your calculator with some simple programs. The ACT highly restricts which programs that you're allowed to put on your calculator. And basically what they've said is you can't have overly complex programs, um, but you can have, and the one that they mention, simple programs that do a function. The four kinds of programs that I would recommend you trying to get are one, a quadratic equation, two, a slope solver, where you put in two points and it will find the slope of a line, three, the distance formula, and four, the midpoint formula. Those are super simple, super easy kind of function related programs that shouldn't be illegal if you have a very trim, slim version of that program. That's about it for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and I will see you guys next time on Super Tutor TV. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Remember, you will need your ID, two number two pencils, and an approved calculator for the test. There will be an interest meeting for those who are not already in Beta Club tomorrow in room B210, directly after school. Beta members do service projects to those who help in our community. Japanese Club will meet every first and third Thursday of the month from 3 to 4 in room B317. Please email Mrs. Moore if you have any questions. FCA will be meeting this Thursday in the auditorium at 725. Hope to see you there. Student Council will be having a meeting on Thursday afternoon in the library right after school. We'll be discussing homecoming floats, dress-up days, and more. FBLA will meet tomorrow in the bank right after school. If you have any questions or cannot on attend, please let Ms. Davis know. It's not too late to join. The Blue Devil Broadcasting Club will have their first meeting this Thursday right after school in room B322. If you are interested in broadcasting, filming, editing video, or creating short films, come on by and see what they're about. The varsity volleyball team fought hard last night against Ravenwood High School, but came up short. They were led by Olivia Carver, Addie Grace Porter, Avery Harris, and Kendall Arnold. The junior varsity and freshman teams also fought hard last night against Ravenwood High School. The Lady Devils lost in two games. The Lady Devils play at home Thursday, September 12th against Laverne High School. Come out and support your Lady Devils. Last Friday, our Blue Devils played a great game against Mount Juliet. Throughout the week, BDN will have highlights of the pep rally and game. Today, we are featuring our Lebanon High School football game highlights.
The College Fair is quickly approaching, and it is on September 20th at Cumberland University during first and second block. Seniors, permission slips are in guidance, and in order to attend, you must return the form back to guidance today. The Lebanon High School swim team is having a preseason meeting tomorrow at 6.30 at the Jimmy Floyd Family Center. The meeting is for students interested in joining the 2019-2020 team. Hope to see you there. That's all the news we have for you today, LHS. I'm Noel. And I'm Wade. And, and this, this has been, been news to you from the white and blue. blue.